Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about gloss coating your models. Recently this has become a hot button issue in the modeling world. Some really amazing modelers have come out and said you don't need to gloss coat your models for decaling or weathering. I personally disagree with this and I'm going to demonstrate why you should gloss coat your model for decaling and weathering. And for this purpose I'm using the 148 Airfix Seafire kit. Before I go into why you should gloss coat, I'm going to talk about how to airbrush gloss coats. These are the four gloss coats in my arsenal. Tamiya X22, Aqua Gloss, Vallejo's Premium Gloss, and AK Intermediate Gauzy Agent. And I'm going to use my Badger Patriot with the 05 millimeter needle nozzle. Now, first one we have is the Timmy X22, which is a really nice gloss coat. It is the only one, however, that you must thin 50-50 uh, in order to get it to airbrush properly. You cannot use it straight from the bottle, but it leaves a beautiful shine. And for all of these gloss coats, I'm using a low air pressure. You really want to use low air pressure to get a gloss, a gloss coat down. Um, so for this, I'm using 12 PSI, which is really where you want to be. You don't want to go past about 15 for gloss coats. And notice I'm fairly close to the test piece here. I'm about five uh, centimeters away. And I keep the airbrush moving. That's the key. Do not let it rest or it will pull up very quickly. A lot of the gloss coats will uh, smooth out on their own, but if you let it stand too long in one location, you'll just have a puddle and it will not smooth out. It will not self-level. And notice that each gloss coat has a different level of shine to it. So gloss coats are not standard uh, throughout the modeling world. Different companies' gloss coats are, are, some are brighter, some are not as glossy. So just keep that in mind. So if you notice, the X22, even compared to the Alkalad, is much more glossier in tone. Lastly, we have the AK uh, Intermediate Gauzy Agent, which is absolutely my favorite uh, gloss coat. It just goes rock hard and it is perfect. Um, highly recommend this one over the other three. But they're all very, very good. You just have to give them a little bit of time to set up. And there you have it. Pretty simple, straightforward. And you can see the different level of uh, shininess to them. So now that we've looked at how to airbrush a gloss coat, I'm going to talk about why you should gloss coat your model. And the first reason I recommend gloss coating your model is because of decals. Now, you may think to prevent silvering, which I don't think isn't really that big of a problem. Rather, I think you should gloss coat your model to, to protect against really bad decals. And I'm going to discuss this more in other steps here. So as you can see, these decals are just horrific. Look at how much of a problem I'm having just getting these decals off of the decal paper. And I put this paper in boiling hot water and there's still, you know, I'm having issues getting the decals off of the paper. So these are really, really bad decals. And if I didn't have a gloss coat, um, I already know I'm going to have to use a lot of decal setting solution to get these decals to melt into the panel lines. Well, if I didn't have a gloss coat, the decals and the decal setting solution are going to ruin my paintwork. Think about all the effort you've gotten, you had to put into your model to get to this point. Do you really want to have that all destroyed uh, because of decal setting solution? I don't think so. So the gloss coat acts like an insurance. It's going to protect your paint from the effects of the gloss, uh, from the effects of the decal setting solution and the decals themselves. And it's going to make the decals a little bit easier for them to go down, to be honest. So I'm going to use Microsol or Microset, the blue bottle, and you can't see it off screen here, and use that liquid to help them conform. And that's somewhat of a powerful tool. I mean, it really works most of the time, uh, but in these details, it had no effect whatsoever, barely any effect. So 
So you can see it came back, the model is dry and nothing. Like it barely has helped the decals conform. So I have to use more powerful uh, decal setting solution. And I'm using Mr. Hobby setting solution here, which is fairly strong. And I'm gonna use several coats on these decals um, to help them conform and melt into the panel lines. And again, if I didn't have that gloss coat, uh, it would have melted into the paint. And I don't care what kind of paint you use. I don't care if it's lacquer, enamel, acrylic, seek decal setting solution, especially the strong stuff that you need on decals like this will weaken or potentially eat away at your paint. And even on the gloss coat, if you notice, it leaves a, a little bit of a residue right there. But since I have it protected, it's not an issue. It's going to disappear when I put a second gloss coat. But this is how much I had to do just to get them to fit correctly. So reason number two I offer as to why you should gloss coat your models. Um, that is to help your decals blend in, especially when you have bad decals like these thick decals. You need a gloss coat to help the decals blend in with the kit. Um, you will notice that decals such as these, because they're thicker, have you'll see a step between the paint and the decal. But if you spray a gloss coat, uh, about maybe two or three gloss coat, light gloss coats over the decals, it will help the decals blend in and reduce that step so it's not visible to the eye unless you're very, very close. Now on the top, the decal was easily hidden, that step. On the bottom, if you notice with these really big decals, that whole lettering is one giant decal. The film is still fairly visible, even with all of the uh, decal setting solution that I use, um, it has it's still there to help it blend in. I'm gonna add in a nice thick gloss coat here, about two to three passes, uh, even four on some of this, and that will help reduce that step and make it look a part of the paintwork. Third reason you should gloss coat your model is because of weathering. Um, and I think we already all know that, but the point that I'm trying to make is, if you hadn't gloss coat originally and you put all of that decal setting solution onto the paint and then you're going to put on a weathering uh, wash uh, using enamel paints or even acrylics which are actually very very strong you're going to ruin the paintwork it's going to cause it to become weakened and pull apart or just completely uh, destroy itself so you need a gloss coat to, uh, to protect against the weathering you're about to do here using uh, enamels, oils, uh, acrylics, it doesn't matter. You need that protective layer to, uh, to ensure that you don't ruin all the work you've done previously. Um, I also wanted to show on uh, this particular demonstration how to use Flory Model Wash. And the way I do that is I decant the wash into a, a container um, because you don't want to use your brush and dip into the bottle. Your brush, no matter how clean it looks, usually has some contaminants, which can ruin the wash. So always decant some of the wash into uh, another container and then place it onto the model. So in this portion of the video, I'm not uh, really looking at gloss coating. I am really uh, wanted to focus on um, the effects you can get from a clay wash like Flory Model Wash. And what I'm doing here is the wash is completely dry and I'm moistening the uh, paper towel with my tongue. And if you notice, it looks like it's removing uh, the wash. And it is for the most part, it's removing about 95% and it's leaving a slight little layer of the wash, which gives the airplane a, a more grimy look to it, a more dirtier look. But if you moisten it with water, you're going to remove 100% of the wash on the pan on the surface and you'll only leave it in the panel lines like a pin wash. And so you can get two different effects with this wash just by doing this. So something to, to keep in mind. In this case, the Seafire, uh, looking at pictures, they did not get that dirty. So I'm going to clean it up here. 
but look at the shine on that side and look at a little bit dirty on that side. All right, so the last reason I recommend using a gloss coat is because of the final coat that you're going to spray onto your model. And um, what's happening here is I'm using a satin final finish on this model uh, based on the pictures that I saw of the uh, sea fires. They tended to have a very satin look to them, not a gloss look to them uh, in the middle of their service. So I'm using a satin coat. And since I've gloss coated everything and I put those extra layers on the decals, when I come in with my final coat, the, the satin coat, it's going to um, bring everything together, but it's also going to make sure that the step that between the decal and the paint becomes a little bit less visible uh, than if I hadn't used the gloss coat. By using the gloss coat, then a final coat on top of it, I'm reducing that step appearance. So they almost look like they're painted on. I'm not saying they, they are painted on. You can see the top decal was not that great at all, but they almost give the impression that they're painted on. And you can see what I'm talking about. Everything is melted in and it gives more of an impression of these were good decals that were almost painted on. 